Guys, a new comet has been discovered and it has been predicted to be visible to the naked eye, giving us a fantastic opportunity to view it and photograph it like we did with the comet Neowise in 2020. So very quickly, let's see how to plan and photograph the approaching comet. The com comet. Let's go! Hello, photopillars, Rafael the Mark. Today's windy, eh? On August 11, Hideo Nishimura, a Japanese amateur astronomer, discovered a new comet, Comet C2023P1, and this new comet might deliver a big, big show. So, you can miss it. Actually, you can already photograph it. You can photograph it now, these days. For example, on September 8th, the comet has been predicted to have a magnitude of 4.8. It is visible to the naked eye. It is an amazing day to photograph and view the comet. And as the days go by, the comet will get brighter and brighter as it gets closer and closer to the sun. Till the comet reaches its perihelion, which is when the comet is closest to the sun and this is the brightest. Perihelion will occur on September 17th and the magnitude has been predicted to be 2.6. Well, long story short, Let's see how to plan your photo of the comet. Let's see all the gear you need to photograph it and all the camera settings you need to photograph this amazing comet. Okay, let's go! Comet Nishimura will be pretty close to the sun. So you can predict the position of the sun, you will find the comet near the sun. Located the sun is super easy to locate the comet. And thus it's super easy to plan your photos of the comet. So go to photo peels and tap on planner. And now set the date you want to photograph the comet. For example, uh, September the 8th. Awesome. Now I recommend you to uh, photograph the comet before sunrise and after sunset. It's when you'll preferably see the comet. Since the comet is pretty close to the sun, you'll see the comet next to the sun position, the thin line you see it on the map. But I'm going to shoot it before sunrise and after sunset. So the thick uh, yellow line that shows you the way the sun is rising, so there's where you need to look for the sun, uh, for the comet uh, before sunrise. And the thick orange line is where the sun will be setting and is where more or less you need to look for the comet after sunset. With these two lines, you can miss it. You can easily plan your shot of the comet. So you can use these lines to find a cool subject, like I did here in Menorca. I found this nice uh, Torre de Castellà here, and I planned uh, a photo of the sun setting. And when the sun sets next to the, the, this beautiful structure, well, the comet will be uh, next to it. So what I recommend you to do is uh, the day of the shooting, the day you wish to photograph the comet, go to the shooting spot and because when the sun sets you'll be able to visualize, to see the comet in real life, you'll be able to adjust your shooting spot. Also you can use the AI button here at the bottom to visualize, well, where the sun is actually setting, in this case next to this beautiful structure that we have here in Menorca. Pretty cool. So then now we have the plan, the shooting spot, the ribbing position, the shooting date and time, for example September the 8th, uh, after sunset, this is after 8.05 p.m. You have the sunset time in the top panel. Uh, well, let's see the gear we need to photograph this comet. Let's go! Okay, to photograph the comet you'll need your camera of course, your tri tripod and head of course, and a shutter release. A shutter release or an intervalometer because you don't want to touch the camera. You need uh, shutter release or interrupter because you want to prevent vibrations into the system because vibrations produce blurry images. When it comes to the lens choice, it depends on the photo you want to take. You can use a wide angle lens if you want to capture the landscape and a tiny comet, or you can go very long, you know, uh, long focal lenses 200, 300, 500 mil to, uh, to get uh, the, a closer view of the comet, or even including the comet aligned with the interesting subject. If you choose to shoot from a long distance from your subject, when the comet is low, near the horizon, you'll be able to line it with the cool subject. For that case, you're gonna need a long focal length. In that case, you'll need a longer focal length. Otherwise, 14, 4, 24, 35 mil work very well for a wide angle lens and cool to landscape and a tiny comet. For example, here you have a photo of Comet Noir Wise, Anthony Claire Took in 2020, where he used a more wide angle lens to capture both the subject, the landscape, and the comet. Also, you have a, an equatorial mount a star tracker. You can use it, of course, because it will help you to shoot much longer exposures and thus capture more detail on the comet, the comet tail. Awesome, now that we have the plan and the gear we need to use to photograph the comet, let's see the kind of settings we need to use for both situations when you want to use a wide angle lens to include the landscape 
and when you want to focus attention and when you wish to focus the viewer's attention on the comet using a telephoto lens and thus only capturing the comet. Let's go! Imagine that on September the 8th, you wish to photograph Comet Nishimura after sunset. So you go to the shooting spot, to the red beam position, one hour or so before the shooting time, before sunset. Of course, you can use the planner and the AR view to make sure that you are at the right shooting spot, that the sun is setting where you want versus your subject. Now, choose the focal length you want to use to get the framing you want, to get the composition you want. 10 millimeters, 14 millimeters, uh, 24 millimeters, for example, and set the camera to manual mode. Because you'll be shooting in low light conditions, set a wide aperture, 1.4, 2.8, and according to the exposure time, use the longest exposure possible that uh, keeps the comet as a, a dot in the sky and not a trail. You know, you can try 10 seconds, 20 seconds, but make sure that the comet is uh, has the shape of a comet, not a trail. Try different exposure times, you'll have time and decide what works best for you. Also, you can use the Sporta Stars calculator and photo pills. Uh, you want to make sure that the comet appears at uh, a dot in the sky, or at least it has the, ta the, the tail and the dot of the comet. This is the calculator we use when we photograph the Milky Way, by the way. Also, if you're using a star tracker, of course, you'll be able to shoot a much longer exposure time uh, to capture much more detail in the comet and its, and, and its tail. If you're using a star tracker, you will need to take another shot for the foreground, of course. Now, given the aperture and the shutter speed, uh, say the ISO that gives you a, a photo correct expose. You can set an ISO 800, 1600, 3200, 6400, depending on the natural light you have at the time of the shooting. Where to focus? Well, that's a good question. I recommend you to focus on your subject. And if your subject is behind that focal distance, the comet will appear acceptably sharp too in the photo. Another option is to focus on the comet to make sure that the comet is completely tack sharp, but maybe you'll lose a bit of sharpness on your subject. Another, thing, another option you have is to focus tack. I'll take a shot for the sky, focusing on the comet, and then take several shots for the foreground, so you make sure that everything from front to back is tack sharp. Finally, if you're getting a $2 foreground, you can always use two LED panels to add light from the side in the foreground and on your subject and capture it correctly as post. Now take a few test shots and make sure that everything looks good, that the focusing is good, that the exposure is right. Otherwise, make the necessary adjustments. On the contrary, if you wish to shoot a close-up of the comet, you're gonna be shooting with a long focal length, like 300, 400, 500 mil, or even 1000 millimeters or more. So choose your focal length and set the widest aperture possible. But my recommendation is that if you're using a, a star tracker, close the maximum aperture by one or two stops. For example, from f2.8 to f4. In this case, where are you focusing? Or you <laughs> obviously you're focusing on the comet, right? You're shooting a close-up shot of the comet. So make a focus on the comet. Now set the shutter speed to half a second or one second. Make sure you don't go over one second because due to the rotation of Earth, the comet might appear kind of blurry in your photo due to the motion blur. Of course, this is not true if you're using a star tracker. On a star tracker, you can even shoot, you know, 1, 10, 20 seconds and check that the comet appears tack sharp. And as always, once you set the aperture and the shutter speed, you need to set the ISO to 800, 600, set, use the ISO that gives you an exposure right on the comet. Usually, when you're using an, a star tracker, an uh, ISO of 800 works very well. Okay, and take a test shot and make sure that the focusing is right, that the comet looks that sharp, and that the exposure is right. Also, I recommend you to take between 15 and 20 photos to stack them afterwards in post-processing and get a much detailed tail, much detail in the tail, and much detail in the comet. Okay, okay, and this is how you can photograph comet Nishimura. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Now, if you wish to learn how to photograph the comets and many other astronomical events, I recommend you to read and download our super detailed astronomical events photography guide. I'm going to leave a link in the description of this video and in the first comment below. And as always, if you like this video, give me a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next Wednesday in another video. And remember, they have the power to magic, like, and shoot, legendary photo. <laughs> Sorry, the wind.